Hello and welcome to Build a Skill with me, Bill Haining. In this session, we are going to look at Bodmus and Formula. The aim of today's session is to deliver learning that will provide the required knowledge to support learners in completing the Level 1 and Level 2 Maths exam. Now, the objective today is to use Bodmus, the order of operations, learn about formula and function machines, evaluate expressions in words and symbols, make substitutions in given formula in words and symbols, and anything else that comes up relating to Bodmus. So you think you can do your sums in any order you like? Think again. Now without using a calculator, let's begin. What is 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 2? Pause your video, write your answer down. Remember, don't be tempted to use a calculator. How did you get on? Well, let me show you. If your answer was 10, then you were wrong. If your answer was 16, you're also wrong. But if your answer was 8, then you were correct. So why is that? Well, that's something called Bodmus. Well, Bodmus is the order in which you must work out a sum or an equation. It's the way all calculators are programmed to do them. The letters stand for brackets. So anything in brackets must be completed first. And to complete, to get rid of the brackets, you complete the sum within the brackets. Then occurrences or as I like to call them, odd things. Okay, and odd things can include things like powers, letters backed up to letters, numbers backed up to letters, numbers backed up to brackets. There's a whole heap of different things that can be included in the occurrences section. Next, you have division and multiplication. Okay, now when you solely get a divide and multiply sum, you can just do left to right because they're equal value as long as there's no occurrences and as long as there's no brackets. And it's similar with adding and subtracting. Both of them are at equal value. So therefore, you can just do a left to right sum unless there's no divide multiply, there's no occurrences and there's no brackets. So Bodmus must be completed in that order from top to bottom. So you have to think about how you use Bodmus. Bodmus is probably one of the most fundamental aspects of maths. And it doesn't matter if it's a simple question or a complex question. Bodmus rules supreme. Now let me show you the process behind the theory. Okay, let's have a look. So in this part, what would you do first? Now remember, Bodmus is all about the symbols and the position of the symbols within an equation. All right, so in this situation, you must do the five times two first before you take it away from the 16, because the Bodmus rule says that multiplying comes before subtraction. So remember, this is why it's called the order of operations. You have to do it in the order that Bodmus stipulates. And you can see there's just 16 minus 10, and the answer is six. Now let's look at another one. Let's look at a little bit more complex. You can see there, the brackets come first. To get rid of the brackets, all you do is complete the sum within the brackets. And 2 plus, five, uh, two plus 3 is 5. Okay, just bring it down. And you can see 5 times 5 is 25. Now, one of the questions I get asked quite a lot uh, when working in maths is, how do I show my workings? There's your perfect workings. Okay, just do one thing at a time, step by step, and follow the process of Bodmus and that will create the perfect workings. Now, you don't have to add the equal sign at the front. That's just my own way of doing stuff. But as long as you follow that process and show the step-by-step -step logical process, you must come to the correct conclusion when you're dealing with Bodmus. Right, here's a little bit more difficult. Again, you can see you've got now powers involved, which is an occurrence, but they're outside the brackets. And so you must complete the sum within the brackets first. So two plus five is seven, seven squared. Right. And again, you need to know about powers. That doesn't mean 7 times 2. It means 7 times 7. 
Okay, so you multiply that and you can see the answer is 49. Now let's try something a little bit more complex. Okay, but again, it doesn't matter how complex the equation of the sum gets. Bodmer's rule supreme. So you can see now we've got a problem here. We've got the brackets first, but within the brackets we have an odd thing. So we must complete that before we complete the brackets. So we do 5 times 5 is 25. And look how I'm bringing it down. Okay, I'm just doing one thing at a time. I'm not trying to be clever and I'm not trying to do more than one thing at a time. And this is your perfect workings. Okay, so 25 minus 9, that's the next part to get rid of the brackets. Bring it down, you can see that's 16. Then you do the 8 times 5, which is 40, 40 minus 16, and that will give you 24. So you can see all the way from simple sums all the way through to complex sums, Bodmer's rules apply. It's a mathematical must. Now you try it. Stop the video. Okay, and have a go at the question and see if you got it right. So how did you do? Let's look at the first one. 9 plus 3 times 6 will give you an answer of 27. 8 times 6 divided by 2 will give you 24. Remember, multiply and divide. I've got the same value, so you can do left to right. And the final one, 9 plus 2 times 6. Do the multiplication first. 2 times 6 plus 9 is 21. So if you've got that, well done. Let's look at another question. Which calculation below gives the following answer? All right, pause the video. Have a go. Which one of these concludes at 110? How did you do? There you go. The answer is C. 12 times 9 plus 2 is 110. If you got that, well done. Now, let's look at Bodmer's with fractions. For Bodmer's with fractions, work out the value of the top and the bottom of the fraction separately then simplify or convert to a decimal or a percentage. It really just depends on what the question is asking you to do once you do the calculation. Now, there you go. That looks fairly complex. All right. But if you break it down, there's a few ways this can go. Uh, and I'll show you at the end what you can do with your final answer. But you break up the top part first. OK, you separate it out. And you can see then you just simply follow the Bodmer's rules. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 5. And that gives you the top part of the fraction. Now you've got the second part. You separate that out. And you can see now, if you do the brackets first, 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 plus 11 is 14. And then all you do now is you can put the fraction back together again. And you can see that your final answer is 7 over 14. Now, depending on the question, you may be asked to simplify this. And you can see that's the same as a half. Or you may be asked to convert it to a decimal or a percentage. All right. And to do that, you just divide the top by the bottom. And that gives you 0 0.5 multiplied by 100. And that gives you 50%. So you can see here, even though it comes in fraction form, your equation, it's actually quite simple to solve if you follow the Bodmer's rules to the letter. And if you do that, you must come to the correct answer. So don't worry about fractions. All right, have a look at these questions. Have a go. See if you think you can solve these puzzles. Again, pause the video and see how you do. So how did you do? Let's look at the first one. Brackets first. Then multiplied, uh, squared. Take away the 4. Should give you 60. The second one, the answer is 24. So you're within the brackets. You do the powers first. Minus the 4 and then add the 3. And then the final one here, the answer is 110. For this one here, you complete the sum within the brackets here. You complete the sum within the brackets here. And once you've done that, you multiply both answers, and that should give you 110. And if you've got all three answers, well done. Right, let's look at formulas now. Okay, formulas, a, a formula is a rule used to calculate a value. This can be written in two different ways, either using words or letters. All right. But you may also see formulas expressed as a function machine, and we'll look at both of these. Okay. Now here's the first one. Let's use words. Mandy works in a pajama factory. She makes 15 pairs of pajamas on the day. How many pairs of pajamas can she make in six days? All right. 
It's fairly simple. You just create your own little Bodmus formula and it's just pyjamas times number of days. Now in the actual workings in your exam, you don't need to write this part down. All you need to do is put the numbers in. And it's a big mistake that a lot of learners make. They seem to think they have to write to explain what they're doing with when they're working, but you don't. All you have to do is show the numbers. Anyone who's marking your paper will know exactly which process you're following and they can see its logic. Okay, so you don't have to write this in. This is just to, to show you what it should look like. So you can see there 15 times six is 90 pajamas per week. All right, so you're creating your own little bottomless formula. Let's look at this one. Michelle pays for a gardener to cut her grass. The gardener charges a fixed fee of 15 pound plus 50 pence per square meter of grass. Michelle's grass is 45 meters square in area. How much does Michelle pay for the gardener to cut her grass? Again, just create your own little formula. There you go. And it's all based on the, the, the numbers in the question. And that's the thing about maths. They will always give you the clues to solve that little mini puzzle. OK, so you can see you have a fixed fee, which is say, £15, plus 50 pence per square metre. And we know there's 45 square metres. So you just simply write that in your little Bodmus formula. OK, and again, you don't need this top part. All right, all you need to show your workings is this. Keep it simple. Put your Bodmus formula in and then go through the process of working through Bodmus. And you can see there that the answer is £37.50. So that's Bodmus in action in conjunction with formulas. Now let's look at function machines. Function machines can help you break down a formula that has more than one step in it. And it's useful as they allow you to visualize the order of steps. So all it is really is a visual presentation of Bodmus. So let's have a look. Now the function machine helps you work out how much Tony is going to be charged by a plumber he has hired. And that's what a function machine looks like at level one. Now, there is other types of function machines, uh, particularly at level two. It may not come in these little boxes, but it may be something like step by step. And all you do is follow the process. And you can see in this case here, however many hours is worked, you just put in this part here and then you follow the instructions. OK, so you can see the plumber worked for 48 hours in total. Work out how much Tony will be charged. Well, all you do is you put the 48 in there. OK, multiply it by 20, add 45, and you can see that's a visual Bodmus formula. OK, so 48 times 21 plus 45 is £1,053. Now you try it. Let's have a go. A shoulder of lamb takes 40 minutes per kilogram to cook, plus an extra 25 minutes. How long would it take to cook a 1.2 kilogram shoulder of lamb? Pause the video, have a go. So how did you do? Again, there's a little Bodmus formula. 1.2 times 40. Complete that, add 25. And you can see the answer is 73 minutes. Let's have another one. Abdul is getting a new broadband. The broadband company charges a one-off installation fee of £30 plus £24.50 per month of usage. Now, Abdul wants this broadband for 18 months. How much will the broadband cost him? Pause the video again and have a go. How did you do? Let's have a look. All right. So your fixed fee is £30. And then £24.50 for 18 months. Create your little bottomless formula. Work through your calculator. And you should come to £471. Now, a school teacher uses this function machine to work out how much it will cost her to take all the children in her class to the movies in pounds. There are 23 children in her class. How much will this cost her? There's a little function machine. Again, all you do, pause the video, see if you can get an answer. But it's just simply 23 multiplied by 4.5 uh, and add 10. OK, and you can see again, look how simple that answer is. And that's the thing with maths. This is the type of answer that gets you full marks because anyone marking your paper will see the logic behind it. You don't have to explain and waste time telling the person who's marking it what you're doing. All right, let your numbers talk. Now that was level one. Let's move up to level two and see how Bodmus solves some more complex equations. 
In certain equations, there may be letters or symbols added. Don't be put off by these. Just follow the Bodmas rules. All right. When presented with letters on the equation, the first thing you need to do is convert these to numbers. Okay. Just remember, when a letter is backed up to another letter, bracket or numbers, you must automatically multiply. And that's the same throughout the whole of maths. There's some questions in probability with your, when you're presented, for example, with a couple of fractions. And the instinct for learners is to add these fractions together to work out the probability of something. Okay, But because it doesn't tell you what to do with these two uh, fractions, then the Bodmas rules apply. So you must multiply these fractions and not add. Okay, so remember, it doesn't matter which sphere of maths that you're working in. Bodmas is all about the symbols. And when there's no symbols, you automatically multiply. And you can see there from the little poem that the chap's holding up there, when no symbol is seen, Bodmas rules apply. Don't do anything else, simply multiply. Okay, and that's throughout the whole of maths. Okay, now here's some examples. A, B, C just means A times B times C. Right, 2B just means 2 times B. Right, you can see there's nothing in between to tell you what to do. Okay, and with things like A, B, and C and stuff like that, you'll have clues in the question to, to convert these to numbers you can work with. Okay, again, you can see there 2 backed up against 2 plus 2 in the brackets. Well, once you solve that puzzle, puzzle in the brackets, you can see 2 plus 2 is 4. What do you do next? It doesn't tell you. So you automatically multiply it. Okay. Uh, and then just a reminder of your, your powers, 6 to the power of 2, you may get that. So that's again 6 times 6. And there's 5 to the power of 3, that just means 5 times 5 times 5. And we'll, we'll give you a little reminder of powers uh, later on in the session. But remember the little poem, when no symbol is seen, Bodmas rules apply. Don't do anything else, simply multiply. Now here's some reminders of some of the occurrences, or as I like to call them, odd things that you may come across when dealing in Bodmas. Okay, now you may be given letters and symbols, right? Uh, and you can see in the question they'll always tell you what these symbols and whatever means. All right, uh, pi may be an exception, okay? Because pi, the default for pi is 3.14. Now they can change that in questions. So if they change that number in the question, go with the number in the question, but the default is 3.14. Now let me show you the type of formula you may come across. Okay, you may come across pi times radius squared times height equals volume cubed, for example. Now don't worry, you'll learn as you go along what all these things mean. But it's important, uh, especially when you're doing areas like perimeter area and volume, they're going to give you a lot of, uh, they may give you formulas to solve. All right. You don't have to remember these formulas, but they will give you the formula. All you have to do is remember what these symbols mean. Okay, that symbol means pi. R with a little two means radius squared. All right, and H means height. And as long as you know what these symbols mean, they will give you the key to tell you the, the, the numerical value. Okay, so you can see there pi is 3.14. Radius squared is 25, so that would be five times five is 25. Okay, and the height is 5. Okay, and you would just convert that to numbers you could work with. Okay, and you can see once you've converted it to numbers you can work with, you just simply use a calculator and multiply it. Okay, so that's how you use letters and symbols. Then you have powers and uh, indices. All right, same thing. All right, so a little 2 is known as squared and a little 3 is known as cubed. And you'll learn again that how important that is when it comes to things like perimeter area and volume. All right, and that's a square number, <coughs> that's a cube number. Uh, and when you add these two together, you do them separate, okay, because that means four times four, and multiplication comes before adding. Two to the power of three means two times two times two, and multiplication comes before you add them. So you do these two separate, add them together, and you can see the answer is 24. Okay. Another thing you may come across is roots. Okay. Uh, and you'll see an example later on, I believe. All right. So that just means four times four is 16. Now that 16 is the power. Okay. This is your square number. Okay. Four times four is 16. Well, the root is just, just your starting number, basically. Okay. So if you, you want to go to the square root of 16, 
it's just getting back to where you were. So it's 16 divided by 4, which tells you 4 is your root number. Okay. So uh, when you do the basics, if you look at the basics, and if you've been through the basics uh, PowerPoint uh, session or videos, you'll see how roots work in conjunction with powers. Okay. Right, let's look at some problems you may face at level 2 uh, and how Bodmus makes life a lot easier. Right, again, you can see here in the form of a fraction and a negative number. Okay, but the Bodmus rules apply. You can see you have to solve the occurrence first. There's your odd thing. All right, the occurrence. Okay, you have to solve that first, then divide it because divide comes before subtraction. Okay, and you just follow the pattern. So it's 3 times 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3, you can see it there. 3 times 3 is 9, right? Then it's 9 divided by 3, which is 3, okay? And then 3 minus 28, all right? And if you know your negative numbers from your from the basic PowerPoint presentation, you'll know that's minus 25. So you can see, although they present it slightly different from level 1, how you solve it's just the same. Just follow the pattern of Bodmus. Now here's another one again. This is a level two question. And you're asked to find the square root of 15 minus 6. And then that's over 3. And remember in fractions, that, to remind you, that's called the dividing line. Okay. So again, you've got this odd thing here. That's your occurrence. You must solve that part first, the top part first. In any fraction, you solve the top part first. In this case, you divide it by the bottom. So 15 minus 6 is 9. All right, and if you know the square root of 9, it's 3 times 3. All right, so the root of 9 is 3. All right, because the power is 3 times 3, so the root is 3. Okay, and then 3 divided by 3 is 1. And again, you can see, although it looks complex, it's actually quite easy to solve if you follow the Bodmus rules to the letter. You must come to the correct answer. All right, now you try it. Okay, again, pause the video when you get a question and then see how you do. Right, so which calculation below gives the following answer of 152? How did you do? Well, if you got answer B, well done. Let's look at another question. Don't forget to pause the video. How did you do? It's a bit more complex now, as you can see. But in a type of question like this, just go through every question individually. And you can do that quickly with a calculator. Because these would be calculator type questions. And you'll quickly see that C is the answer. And if you've got B and C, well done. Well, now you know the basic rules. Let's look at some more complex questions and how Bodmus will make maths that little bit easier. Now, you can see in this question, it's a very busy question, a lot of information, okay? Now, what I say to you and what I'll say to all my learners is when you get a question like this and there is a formula in it, then personally, I think that's one of the easier questions I can get because I understand the Bodmus rules, all right? Now, when you get presented with a question like this and there's a formula in it, in the first instance, ignore the question. What you have to do is focus on this formula. So what you're going to do is look at this formula because this T here, if you imagine you put that to the end, that's the answer they're looking for. Really, they should put it at the end. It's a bit misleading, but if you put it to the end, you'll see what it looks like. And you can see now, if you take it round and spin it round, there's your Bodmus formula. And that's the answer they're looking for. OK, so imagine this is your workings. Now, you go through the Bodmus rules, okay? And you can see you've got brackets. And now within the brackets, you've got two occurrences. And you can't go forward to you solve these occurrences. So you just do one thing at a time, okay? And you can deal with why. So what is why? Now you go to the question and you read the question, you find out what why is. And remember what it says, the question will give you all the clues to solve that particular puzzle. Now we know why is the money earned per year. And if you follow on, you'll see the caterer earns £135 per month. So per year is just 1375 times 12. OK, so that's Y solved. Now P, what is P? Again, personal allowance. And you can see the personal allowance is 11 
850. All right. So armed with that information, you convert the Y and P to numbers you can work with. Okay. And you can now see you've got something you can work with in the brackets. So you complete the sum within the brackets. And remember, once you complete the sum within the brackets, there's nothing there to tell you what to do. So you automatically multiply. Okay, and you can see 0 0.2 times 4650 is 930. But what I want to emphasize at this point is look at the workings. How simple are they? And this question is actually worth 7% of your marks. Okay, because remember, Bodmus is one of the big six. It's where you're going to get your most of your points from. Now let's look at a question involving a fraction at level two. Now at Tom's workplace, the thermometer is reading 86 degrees Fahrenheit. When the temperature goes over 32 degrees Celsius, Tom must have an extra break. Now he uses the formula below to calculate the temperatures in degrees centigrade. And it says there, will Tom get an extra break? Yes or no? Stick to the bottom of the rules. Remember when you're dealing with fractions, you do the top half first and then divide by the bottom. Okay. Now you can see again here they've got the C at the front. That's the answer they're looking for. N to the left hand side is the answer they're looking for. And really it'd be nicer if it was over that side. So let's do that. Okay. Let's turn it round and you can see there that just means the same thing. And it gets it into your head. You can visualize it better. So what we'll do, we'll complete the top half of the fraction first. Okay. And there it is. And you can see there from that information, the first thing you've got to do is do the brackets. Within the brackets, you have an occurrence, which is the F. So what is F? Well, if you read the question, you will see that F is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so you put that in there. Okay, 86. Again, look at the workings, just doing one thing at a time, step by step. Now we can complete the sum within the brackets. And to get rid of that, again, there's nothing in there to tell you what to do. So you automatically multiply it. So it's 5 times 54, which is 270 degrees centigrade. Now we deal with the bottom part, all right? And you just simply divide it by the bottom number. So you take 270, divide it by 9, and you can see the final answer is 30 degrees centigrade. And we've followed Bodmus every step of the way. All right, and again, look how simple the workings are. You don't have to, you don't have to write all this, this part here in, all right? Just the numbers, and as long as you come to that answer, you can't go wrong. Now, will Tom get an extra break? Well, you go to the question, you can see it's got to go over 32, so Tom doesn't get an extra break. Okay, so it's now over to you. Have a go. Now, at school, a PE teacher is separating people out of the teams. The formula is C equals S divided by 10. It is used to work out the number of team captains needed. S represents the number of students, and C represents the number of captains. If there are 60 students in total, how many team captains are needed? Pause the video, have a go. So how did you do? Yeah, turn the formula on its head and you can see that S divided by 10 equals C. So it's 60 divided by 10 equals six captains needed. You got that well done. Now Ali has a wooden block in the shape of a square base pyramid. The pyramid has a base height of 7 centimetres and a height of 9 centimetres. Now the volume of a squared base pyramid is V equals 1 third A squared H, where V is the volume and A is the base length and H is the height. Calculate the volume of Ali's wooden block. Now we know it looks fairly complex. Take your time with this one. All right, see if you can come to the correct answer. Pause the video. So how did you do? Well, again, take your formula, turn it on its head, okay? And if you follow the Bodmus rules, it's just 1 divided by 3 multiplied by a squared. Remember, they give you the clues in the question, and then you multiply that by height because there's nothing in between to tell you what to do. And you can see that's what it looks like before you convert these numbers, all right? So if you write it out like that, you can see that's what they're actually asking you to do, all right? Then you convert it to numbers based on the clues in the question, and you can see the answer is 140 centimetres cubed. And if you got that, you're doing brilliant. Well done. And that is Bodmus and Formula.
so thank you very much and i hope that helped